Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Advent. Today's reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The grace of the wonderful kingdom. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The winged child shall put his hand on the other stand. These are taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. What a wonderful world is depicted in the above scriptures. The author is convinced that it is particularly interesting to read these verses at this time of the year when the church calendar is approaching the season of Advent. Advent is a time for us to try to pause in the midst of our busy lives, to take a moment and think about what the coming of Christ conveys to each of us and to the world at large. The New Revised Standard Version gives this passage the title the peaceful kingdom. And in terms of content, it is an affirmation. But from peace, the author also thinks of a picture that emerges full of wondrous things and revealing the immensity of the Lord's grace, which makes one cry out in joy and praise. The kingdom of the Messiah is a wonderful and grace-filled kingdom. Through the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, mentioned in the scriptures, a kingdom where with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth and not on the basis of mighty military power and great wealth. The knowledge of the Lord will fill the whole earth. Do we all long and expect such a kingdom to come today? In a modern commercialized society full of materialism, Christmas has degenerated in many people's minds into a great opportunity for consumption and entertainment. And the church, at this time of Advent, must be all the more aware that the purpose 
of Christ's coming must not be forgotten. Only a kingdom based on justice and righteousness, and the pursuit of the knowledge of the Lord, can bring true peace, in which we can experience grace from above and marvelous leadership. Advent is, from a faith perspective, a time of reflection on the meaning of the birth of Christ. The author is not advocating a bitter approach to Christmas, but rather an exhortation for us to remind each other and watch over each other, to hold on to the true joy and peace that Christ's birth will bring to us. If we lose sight of justice and righteousness, and forget to fear and know the Lord, we will not experience the grace and wonderful kingdom that He has prepared for us. Pray for mercy, and let the Holy Spirit guide us in the way we should go. Amen. Let us have a time of reflection. What do you think the peaceful kingdom will be like? How do we get to know the Lord today? How can we pursue the grace of this wonderful kingdom? Is it possible? Why? Let us pray, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter eleven, verse two. O Father, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. In the name of the Lord. Amen.